Thank you very much. So uh, I'll continue the discussion. This is the third talk in this series. And this reference is, again, the same. Torsion G paper by Addition of Winter School Notes. The theorem we are, should, uh, we are trying to understand is the following. So our space is the following. You have this QP. P and then you have this periodic <coughs> hat and the theorem is following. And then you have this. Then I put this anti canonical part and so this over SPA. This perfect right? So we will see a little more details of this theorem today. And using this, today's main thing is that. Now here I am not putting this anti-canonical part. This is the is perfectoid. Okay, so as I told uh, last time that we are we have to get a tower <coughs> and. Uh, this this is not this space X that is something related to this gamma naught P infinity. It is certain Shimura variety, and I'm going to define today briefly. And Aditya again is going to talk about more about it. So here you have inside it you have this ordinary part, and uh, you have this. This is a work convergent part. So I uh, just recall something uh, starting from this notation. So G over Q connected reductive group, and it's for us like we're well enough to restriction of scalars from K over Q of GL two. Q over Q C M. So this is our group. And let's take this G over Z. This is a model. Sorry. This G over Z model of this over Z. So I'm going to, I'm just looking to define this object and where we can define this ordinary part and this little. So, uh, <coughs> little more part of that, if certain neighborhood of that. And uh, this is a group scheme of finite type. Now this K, this is a level structure, this is compact open, and this is the structure that is coming from this gamma naught or this gamma n that I talked about yesterday also. To open, <coughs> then the variety that we are interested in is this Shimura variety. This is associated to this connected group, it's K, and associated to this level structure K is the following. Mod K, where this X to this G R not infinity not. Okay, so is this is somewhere this is well, I don't want to this is a maximal split torus. So this is the variety and uh, there is a model of this variety over number field. So we are interested in this scale, this is a model. 
So as I told you, this is the first picture I have drawn is the following, if this x naught p and this is a model over spec z and there is main problem is the fiber at p, the special fiber there is a problem and uh, this x k, this is just a generalization of this, this is a modular curves, we have this x naught of n, this is now generalized for higher dimensions <coughs> and uh, and uh, this, this xk is just a generalization of the usual classical model of a curve that we saw yesterday. So xk is the model of a, there is a model of this, this is in the yesterday's uh, table, this is the second part of that, <coughs> second column, zp of this Shimura variety, this is the Shimura variety. Now in the first picture, you remember there is, if you take any point that correspond to elliptic curves with a cyclic subgroup, it corresponds to here and elliptic curves with a basis of comma n for this, again this is over spa, QP cyclotomy, ZP cyclotomy. So similar to here, uh, so we have the similar uh, modular description of this, uh, this space, uh, this is a modular space. principally polarized. So we, uh, yesterday situation, we are in the dimension one situation, dimension one, you have elliptic curves, it's a dual is same as uh, uh, the same, but here we need to uh, talk about, we have an abelian scheme situation, dimension is greater than one, you need to talk about uh, uh, polarization and uh, it is the same as, uh, as Professor Shalit was talking about, you have to talk about tail, it's principally polarized, endomorphism should be there in the level structure, level structure is already taken care by this K, K is the, this level structure. So this is the principally polarized n dimension variety, n so this is modular space of principally polarized n dimension and n variety. Of level, certain level. <coughs> Now we take this, so as you say, as you remember, this is just a, if y not of n, this is just giving elliptic curves, but then, then you have to compactify, you have to add the cusp. So here is also the same thing here. So this is, we can look at faultings and chai. Now this chi k star, this is the same as you take this x k p uh, there in this board and there is a model, this is, this is the model of a z p, the, it, this also has a model of a z p, z p means this you are localizing at p, x k, <coughs> so k cyclic and sorry. This is the algebra, this is the base algebra is ZP cyclic and we are completing this PID completion. This is our base space that we are talking about. This is our X. So just now I defined base object. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> now we need to define this uh, ordinary part. As I already told you last time, this ordinary part is a part. Yeah, it's compactified, yeah. This is, oh sorry, yeah, yeah, sure, so, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to define this part, this ordinary part, where uh, this is your, this is your KP zero. So as I told you, this is an ordinary part, and this is where Hasse invariant is, uh, uh, this in, in, <coughs> Uh, as invariant is inver invertible, so that means a periodic valuation is one. And then you want to define it. So to do that, so I define this. You see this, uh, uh, intuitively this is like this, but it is basically you have a map like this and then there is, <coughs> so you need to have this XKP star of zero. This is this object here, 
And to define it, <coughs> start, I'm going to define this. I remember last time I was looking at this category of periodically complete. Flat ZP cyclic algebra. Now define a map from this functor from this category of this CR to set as follows. You take any S here and send it to <coughs> F comma U with the property as follows. F S P of S to X K P and to U. This is H not S P F F one minus P. Remember the Hasse invariant is going to give you modular forms of weight P minus one. So <coughs> And this is section such that, so la, last time I defined Hasse invariant, and Hasse invariant lives in the characteristic P section. So this is a section such that U dot Hasse invariant F bar equals to one. So under certain equivalence, two equivalence, if U is equivalent to F prime prime, if and only if one is F prime and there exists which belongs to S such that U is PH and this is the so unless until as all these lemmas are in the Schauser's paper so <laughs> this <coughs> this functor I have defined a functor here. This is this is the functor. <coughs> functor f is representable by a by a formal scheme. It's flat. Cyclic, and uh, locally, if you look at certain uh, of R, this is contained in star K P. Then uh, this looks like this: zero R. So this will be. So this tilde means this is a lift in the characteristic zero of Hasse invariant. Okay. So, <coughs> so this is a functor, and this functor is going to uh, there is this is representable by a certain schemes, and this is the scheme that 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 is this x star kp zero. Okay, so now I'm just going to. So this is again. I'm still in this first part. So I'm trying to prove that there is. Uh, uh, I want to prove the perfect art space. So to do that, I, I'm going to produce a goal, I'm a tower, where this if successive map is given by Frobenius. Remember, the perfect art space is a space which locally it is affinoid, and if you go mod p, it is like a Frobenius. So we will do the same thing. So I'm going to produce a, is a map like this. Start. This is this is your x. And goal. So for all epsilon such that zero less than equals to epsilon less than one, <coughs> and 
m belongs to natural number. So you already have it for m equals to 0. So I want to produce something in for all m star 0 such that 1 for m equals to 0 to 0 we get back our x 0 so x star k 0 The transition maps are probably near small p. <coughs> and two, let's call it F, F. Reduce mod p to the power one minus epsilon. So remember, this is your you are in this category C R where it is a finite flat ZP cyclic algebra. You can go mod p. That's what <coughs> is a Frobenius. So this is in this all. These are the characteristic zero rings. So to do that, what do you do? <coughs> so if you have this, so uh, uh, Amulinda asked me yesterday, and uh, yeah, so if you have this data, so uh, it is it is there in this uh, his uh, first paper. Uh, if you have a, a bunch of maps which has this property, then if you go to the adic generic fiber, it dies to the perfect right space. So it's a publication I is the first paper shows this. So uh, proof is little involved. So, but I will just uh, roughly say what how does it goes. So I'll just try to produce this tower. Once you have this tower, then uh, this adic generic fiber. <coughs> so if you have this uh, three of them, then A perfect right space. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so uh, now I'm just going to define how you can uh, define these maps, and this is something related to what we have I have discussed yesterday. We have an abelian schemes, and then you have a canonical subgroup associated to it. Okay, so now remember we are looking at this uh, this space where it is we are uh, corresponding element of this uh, abelian schemes. Uh, these are ordinary schemes. Okay, <coughs> so this is the key point. If you want to, so I'm going to produce this transition. How these transition maps are defined? So a priori, this all of them is the same space. X k star is zero. I will take this as a space. These are all same, but these maps I need to define. And this is the Frobenius. And this is coming from the canonical subgroup that I defined last time. With this tower for m equals to 1, and then the same thing it is going to, so you have it uh, for a 1, 2, and then all of them is Frobenius. So, <coughs> so remember this. Uh, KP. So, in the similar to the case of uh, modular forms, you have a certain principally polarized abelian schemes. Above that, this is an universal abelian schemes to it, and this is an ordinary. So, let me recall what I have proved. If you have an ordinary abelian schemes, then you can talk about a, you already have this CM. <coughs> this is a canonical subgroup. Subgroup. Inside this A. So that existence, because of this, we are in the ordinary locus. This existence of this CM, what he proved yesterday, I proved. Okay? So now you have, you can look at this abelian schemes 
a prime is a mod cm. Okay, and uh, the remark I made is the following: If you start with the ordinary abelian schemes and if you go quotient divided by cm, you are going to get an ordinary ordinary abelian schemes. <clears throat> so this is an ordinary abelian schemes. Okay, so now you have what we have. So I'll take this space. Zero, and the same space x a zero, and now we have these abelian schemes a over a. This is an ordinary scheme. Ah, I should not write over top of that. Okay, and then you can look this a prime. A prime is this scheme, and you have this Frobenius p here. That's going to induce a f here. <coughs> So this this is the map of this f here. <clears throat> okay, and the same thing if you if you do the uh, what I talked about, so you have the similar theorem with epsilon there. So I I just did it for uh, uh, this thing, but I uh, stated a lemma, Schwarz's lemma, which says that if you have this certain Hasse invariant, certain conditions are satisfied, then there exists a canonical subgroup. In, uh, in inside these abelian schemes, so this <coughs> so the same thing. So if you want, if you do it, so you are going to get this over this locus. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Any questions? <coughs> yeah. Okay. So now I uh, just fine. So you have. Uh, This anti last time I defined only anti canonical subgroups. Now this anti canonical locus. Locus. Let I zero. Open. Close. Locus inside. Okay, so this chi zero. So I am just. This is the adding. So we have these formal schemes here. You can put the adding space associated to it. <coughs> so this is m <coughs> that parameterizes. A comma B with A ordinary variety plus principal polarization and level structure. Is contained in a p power m such that d p is intersection c one is zero, and what we have is the following. So I defined here <coughs> certain x kista. Natural number, we have salon. This is Okay, and the map is the following. So here I just define anti canonical locus to be a. So yeah, 
It has two uh, data. One is, is a ordinary abelian scale, abelian variety, and then D is the anti canonical subgroups. Now, this lemma is you can make it here in this side, last time what I told. So, if you take and this is this has this data, if you have an abelian schemes and a <coughs> um, cyclic subgroup of order n, and the map is the following. So, this is just oops. you take this A, comma D and send it to this. Uh, a C M C. This is just a quotient data. So this is uh, the map, and then uh, this uh, uh, this part of this uh, curve that get identified with uh, um, inside this, and uh, so it forms a tower, and it gives a perfect earth structure. So this is what I want to say about this first part. Now I just move on to the second part, and uh, so so I just want to define the last time I talked about it, it's already there in the the Shalit's, uh, talk. So you have this the main invariant. There are two ingredients to go from this part one to part two. I'm going to spell it out. <coughs> huh. Sorry? D. Ah, okay. Okay. <clears throat> ah, that's a good question. No, but then D depends on CM, right? I mean, CM is a canonical subgroup of. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So D M sits inside uh, this C1 and then C1. <coughs> okay, so now I'm just, uh, so this uh, transition from, uh, so uh, I have here, I have this anti-canonical part here, but here there is not, there is no anti-canonical part. So in the whole thing, so I think uh, what Aditya is going to talk about, so there is a how to get a gallery presentation. So there, uh, you don't need this anti-canonical part. So first theorem is only for this anti-canonical part, but the second theorem is for the whole, uh, this adic space. So this is a perfect right space, and uh, so to do that, so we have to use a map that, uh, so there is a pi hot state, so I'm going to motivate you a bit about it. So this is a map from chi p to a flag variety, and for uh, g equals to one, it just get p1. So it's P1 add, and uh, Chitrabhani has already defined it, uh, what uh, this P1 add. He has given explicit description of P1 add. So this is the, I'm going to define what is this flag variety, and uh, so this, and one of the properties, the most important properties of this flag variety is that it is compact. So uh, it is a compact, we need to, uh, and this map is, G, so you are starting with the GSP2 equivariant. So this, this property you need to use. And uh, <coughs> so there exist finitely many P infinity union of one. And yeah, so so if you can prove that this is the per, this perfectoid space, then this is a finitely many translates of the perfectoid space. So then it's like perfectoid. <coughs> so I'll just first I this is the key thing. So I'll just try to hit what is this. <coughs> okay, so. <coughs> So let's try to do it over C. So, uh, so we have this uh, Hoplin, and you have this H bar. So this point on this, this, uh, and then you take this X C 
and then you have this P1C and this P1C is the set of a lines passing through origin and then you have, you can define this by theorem. Now this H bar, as I uh, last time I talked about, if you take any point tau, this correspond to elliptic curves and you have certain, these elliptic curves, it is of dimension two, uh, sorry, dimension one, but if you look at this H1 EZ, so this, the tensor with C, this is H zero. <coughs> So you have to tensor with C to zero, and this is your uh, Lie algebra E, and this is your cotangent space. And this pi, this is your pi Hodge-Dirac over this side. This is your pi. So we will uh, do the same analogous to that in the periodic setting. <coughs> and to do that, <coughs> yeah, you have this, uh, every point of this, this can be identified with H1, sorry, H, the same. This, this is a data, uh, this Hodge uh, structure of that. So, so we have these two things we are comparing. Here, here in this we have this DRAM thing and here it is. Uh, <coughs> so we'll do the same thing Hodge and Tate. Yeah. <coughs> gamma one, gamma two, gamma k belongs to GS. That is this group. This translate of this. Most important property, this map respect this GS. <coughs> there are two groups. Sorry, there is one group and there is two spaces. Yeah, yeah. So. <coughs> okay, so I'll just. Uh, Okay, so uh, you, so we have to. This is over C. This is like a very big space. So here also we have to start with the let me see P U P bar. Huh? So now you start with an abelian T over C. C. So then you have this omega A, which not of A. This is isomorphic to home. So the same things, uh, you have this space, this, this is a dual space, of this is a cotangent space, and this is a tangent space. Sorry, this is your C. C. Now you have, uh, you are starting with an abelian variety, so you have a well pairing there. So you A hat, there's a dual variety. This is group schemes over C. So A. Okay. And then you say have a, there's a well pairing. This is A, P. bar and if you go to take this n tends to infinity, so you're going to get P of A. Of one. And uh, it gives a map. Okay, 
And uh, this is a host, now host state map is defined in this way. You have this. Okay, so, so. And this space is home TP zero. Okay, so this is a hot state map. Okay, so uh, so this is step. And uh, the second ingredient. So the what? Uh, so we are going from this gamma not of there are two transition. One is uh, so we have. Uh, So what do you have? There's a spectroid. So two transition. You have this from there. You need to. So, sorry, gamma one. This is perfectoid. <coughs> and from there, I want to produce that. The T is perfectoid. Okay, so uh, if you can prove this, then using this proposition, we are done <coughs> because it is only uh, this is an open and is a and clo open uh, open set inside uh, this locus, and we have uh, this is a compact set, so we have finite mean translates. So if you can prove this, uh, then we are good. And uh, the, so in general, it is there. And uh, if if this map is finite and ethyl, then we are good. But uh, this map is finite and ethyl, but this map is not ethyl. So it has, there is a key ingredient of to proving this theorem is the second thing. So this is, so this map is, and then you have, if you have a, this map, then you have this faulting theorem. But however, this map is not. And uh, here he used a so we use this. So I will just uh, this is all commutative algebra. So I'm just going to state uh, what is it. And uh, so this he cannot use this theorem. And then he uses this <coughs> its normalized trace to go from here to here. And then uh, the faulting theorem is already there for. Going from here to here, so then we have, <coughs> yeah, any questions? So I'm going to uh, define this Tate's uh, normalized traces. Yeah, any question? <coughs> Okay, so uh, this lemma is the following. This is all. <coughs> so I have you know, starting with this CR. Remember, this is a category of periodically complete ZP cyclic algebra. And if you take this y1, y2, yr, n belongs to R. N to R. And I demand that. Uh, and uh, logical and important. Okay. And let's look at this two again. C goes to R. And I want to get some information about base string. <clears throat> and this conclusion is the following. Giving is 
is <coughs> finite free R module. And it is generated by the following. And uh, this is a finite free R module, so we can ask what is the trace looks like. And this is the following, so if you take this. And let's take this I equals to P. R, <coughs> then trace of S over R is containing I power L. <coughs> okay, so, uh, so uh, this is like a pure competitive algebra. <coughs> yeah, this is product of this. <coughs> I is this P. No, no, just I one. What, what do you mean by that? No, it's random. No, I, I one, but I is a ideal generated by PIs. PIs are fixing. I am just starting with this. Oh, no, 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 no. this is random. <coughs> it's comma. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use this. So remember that uh, the first thing I just did is that this uh, the scheme is represented by a certain uh, affine affinoid, SPF of certain R epsilon by U times Hasse invariant tilde minus one. I want to get information about that ring from this lemma, <coughs> and uh, this quality of this is the following. So let's take this R belongs to C of R and uh, R of finite type dimension in and I define this R epsilon to be just R okay. and I want to get some information about wait, what will happen if what is the map R epsilon to C? <coughs> okay, so now, so uh, this hypothesis, I'm going to use this one and two. <coughs> so I demand, so, so if you take this R epsilon by P to B, you have this U epsilon by P, I demand this phi P of u epsilon, u epsilon by p to the power p, and b, so 2, p mod is Frobenius. R mod p to the power. So then, so the same hypothesis, so I'm just using this 1 and 2, so then this is just a quality of this parallel to this world. We have this 1 by P, finite plus flat, and 2, I want to get some information about trace. So this is the trace of this map. So R epsilon by P to epsilon by P, P. Okay, so trace of this R epsilon by P. Epsilon. <coughs> and you have to invert this one by P. So I'm just 
this of this r epsilon by p. This is contained in p to the power certain power. So I just wanted to show you uh, this calculus here. So you. So I'm just starting with uh, this r. You have this sort of dimension n. So this chin in comes here. Okay. So. Uh, now, uh, where are we? So you have this this formal schemes where this O x epsilon. So this is locally it is represented by this kind of affinoid. So you have this this kind of ring. So I'm going to use that. And uh, so I, as I told, I have a certain tower. So we have this A M M prime and all of them out. So I want to. Uh, so, so this is now I'm going to define the states normalized trace. So let's take this zero less than equals to epsilon less than half, and uh, for all m prime equals to m, you take at this one by p m m. So now I'm just starting with this. Uh, 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 all of them is dimension n. So we are interested in this. <coughs> I'll choose this n suitably. My n is not g. I'll choose your n suitably. And this is the map time space. So is a map from O x. So I'm just uh, in, I have to invert one by p. Remember, this is all of them. This is represented by affine schemes, and that looks like this and uh, the claim is that yeah so uh, e these are all principally if this, this is a yeah yeah so there is this is a, this that's coming from that g so e e we, so this is we are doing the dimension one so now this upper half plane this correspond to the elliptic curves now we want to have this uh, G, G dimensional thing, so Abelian variety. Print this is principally where <laughs> G, this is GSP, 2G, ZP, so that is the G that comes into the picture. So now I have to replace this N with the suitable G. So, <clears throat> so we need to have a compatibility. We have a tower, we need to have a compatibility, and this compatibility is coming from this kind of thing. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so now this implies trace of it. So this is a fixed m prime. So now I'm going to vary this m prime. So then this p to the power m. So the content of uh, this uh, uh, corollary is the following. So we have a control on the traces of all of these maps. Yeah. So the the image is contained in p to the power minus c m. So this m is fixed here, and now I'm varying all these m primes. M prime any greater or equals to m. So this is contained in c m with the o x by p to the power m with Cm tends to zero as m tends to infinity. Now this object is called a Tate's normalized trace. <coughs> uh, I think it's directly because you are taking inverse that thing. So for all m. <coughs> so upshot is the following. So you have. of m bar, this is going to give you a map of a This is the definition of Tate's normal stress. Stresses. 
And uh, now once you have that, so so this follows. And uh, so I just erased it. So the so this is a theorem that uh, that is being used to go from gamma one to the power m t and t x infinity and t is this faulting's almost purity theorem. So it says the following. So if you take this R and L is a finite finite plus ethyl implies L is also perfectoid. Now you have a perfect uh, data. We have certain R naught, so you have R naught, and then inside it you have. So this is the bad notation S. S naught is almost finite. Okay, so using this, uh, he has gone from this gamma 1 into gamma 0 of it, gamma n. So I'll stop here.